Now, before we start examining the software in a little more detail, I want to take a couple of minutes just to talk about PaintShop Pro and how it stacks up against Photoshop. Not in a comparative way, this is by no means a product comparison. Um, I believe Photoshop and PaintShop Pro are aimed at totally different user bases anyway, but I think it's probably important to identify the differences and of course similarities between those user groups, really so we can make informed decisions and be confident that what we're going to get out of PaintShop Pro is exactly what we're intending. So I'm just going to boot it up and whilst it's doing that I'll talk about those user groups in a little more depth. Uh, from my experience uh, of which I've had plenty uh, I would say Photoshop is positioned within its marketplace as an industrial tool so you're more likely to see it in graphics and creative agencies and it tends to get used by people and companies who have to make numerous and quick responses to a client's requirement. So there isn't really a route one solution for achieving a specific result. And to be honest, it can take a year's worth of training to achieve something in Photoshop that we can pretty much do with the click of a button in PaintShop Pro. So from my position as a digital artist, I would say PaintShop Pro is for working with our own stuff. Um, it's been designed to help us maximize the results quickly uh, via a more wizard style um, editing environment as opposed to a highly specific set of parameters and variables which like I say will probably take us about a year to learn. It does and will cross over into a more professional arena but I'm going to save those tips and tricks for the end of the lecture series as it uses a little more advanced functionality. In order to reinforce the last point I made, I'm actually going to run a quick demo and it's based on correcting an image that contains a common problem found in amateur photography. Now you'll see here in front of us that we have a rather magnificent looking Georgian Roman Catholic Church. Um, but there's a lot of spherification and swelling going on. Now the image itself has been taken with a wide angle lens so that result is actually completely expected. But it clearly illustrates the problem that you'll see in a lot of images that have been created on modern day digital cameras. Um, because they have a kind of generic approach and their mission is to give you the best image possible, their field of vision will change automatically depending on how close you are to the dominant subject. So I guess the hypothetical problem, um, if you are including this image in a brochure or flyer that had a straight edge characteristic, uh, the last thing that you would want are all of these curvy lines as it would present a pretty strong visual conflict. So we need to straighten it out somehow. Now if I was going to attempt that in Photoshop we would likely be spending two to three hours using a pinch filter along with distortion tools and possibly even the warp mesh to get anywhere near the result that we were looking for. Uh, but thankfully in PaintShop Pro if we go over to image adjust and wait for that panel to drop down you'll see in the bottom tier that we have a section dedicated to lens correction. So if I click fisheye you'll see that I pretty much iron out all of those kinks with the click of a button. There's still a lot of perspective going on but we can treat that as well. So I guess the idea of this module was to give you an idea of the main differences between working in Photoshop and PaintShop Pro and if this way of working actually suits the way that you want to work. Uh, if you want a paid job in design it is probably vital that you've got Photoshop on your resume but if you're looking for quick results, good processing, high quality and speed and like I said in an earlier module if you want to get these images up on your social network or on your blog that kind of thing then PaintShop Pro is definitely for you.